Okay, welcome. So now let's get into the sum and difference of two cubes. So previously what we worked on was finding the zeros with factoring. Now we're going to look into finding the zeros with the sum and two cubes. So you can see here what I provided in the notes is we can factor a sum and difference of two cubes. All right, and that's basically the first element that we're going to go and take a look at. But then we're going to look into finding the zeros. And the important thing here is this quadratic trinomial um, is only the zero is only going to provide compact complex solutions. So therefore, to find them, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. And I'll show you what that means just in a second. So the first thing is we want to really kind of identify A and B in this case. So you can see here, to identify the difference of two cubes, you want to make sure that the first term can be written as a cube term, which it can, you know, let's just use A cubed. And then minus, we want to make sure this can be as B cubed. Well, X cubed is obviously going to be, you know, X cubed. And then can we rewrite 64 as a cubed number? And indeed, we can. 4 cubed, because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So in this case, you can see that A minus B, that's what I was trying to show over there. I'll just have to rewrite it. So what you can see here in this case then, that X is equal to A, and 4, or yeah, 4 is equal to B. And the reason why I'm doing that is just so you can kind of see when you're plugging them into this formula, you're just going to replace all the A's with X's and all the B's with 4. So you can see the difference of two cubes right here. You're just going to replace them to simplify. So if I want to factor this, I want to find the 0. So I'm going to replace F of X here with 0. And then what I'm basically going to do is just follow this. So A, we said, was equal to X. So this would be X minus 4 and then times X I'm just going to put it in squares for a second, plus uh, x times b, which would be 4, plus b squared. And once you kind of get used to this, you can kind of like simplify this step, kind of work this a little bit quicker, because um, obviously you don't need to write 4 times x, you can just write 4x. But let's just go ahead and do the first one as like we would evaluate any other function. So then this becomes x squared plus 4x plus 16. Okay, now if we wanted to use the zero product property from here, it's fine to go ahead and use this, like you just say x you know, minus four is equal to zero, and then add the four, add the four, and we can see that we have one real zero, x equals positive four. But we know by the fundamental theorem of algebra that there's three zeros here, right? So those other two zeros are going to be in this um, factor. So x squared plus four x plus 16. Now, in the previous lessons, we learned that usually with this was factorable and we could find the other zeros. But the problem here is we noticed that there's not two numbers that multiply to give us 16 that add to give us 4. So therefore, that's in this case, we need to now solve using the quadratic formula. And did it say? Okay, so we just need to solve. We don't need to write it as linear factorization. So now, going back to using the quadratic formula again, so we have opposite of b plus or minus the square root. Now, in this case, I'm just going to kind of simplify this a little bit. So b squared. <coughs> Actually, you know what, I don't want to confuse. Let's do b squared equals 16 minus 4 times a times c. Okay, and that's going to be all over 2a. All right, so now let's do negative 4. I didn't want to write 16 there because then I want people to be confused, so that's why I kind of was like, you know what, let's just work through it. All right, so let's see, we have 16. And this is going to be 4, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, times uh, 16 is going to be 16, that's going to be 32, that's going to be minus 64, and that's going to be all over, oops, let's write that as 2 times a, which is 1, right? So that's going to be times 1. All right, so now, so that's going to be divided by 2. Um, 16 minus 64 is going to be a negative 48. So we have negative 4 plus or minus square root of negative 48. Jeez. So write negative 48. And then all over 2. Now I'm kind of running out of space here, so I'm going to simplify negative 48 over here. So the important thing is when you have a, uh, let's actually, let's do this in like red. So negative 48. Come on. So again, remember when we are simplifying with the negative, we can rewrite this as a negative 1. So that's going to take out our imaginary i. We also want to be able to determine um, the largest squared number that divides into this. So I can break this up into negative 1 times 16 times 3. 
So therefore, I can further break up this radical into square root of negative 1 times the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. Okay, So the square root of negative 1 is obviously our imaginary unit, i. The square root of 16 is 4, and then we have the square root of 3. So we just write that as 4i square root of 3. And that's the way that I would want to write this, um, this next answer. So therefore, when I go ahead and simplify it, so we'll do this one more time here. I'll write this as negative 4 plus or minus 4i square root of 3 divided by 2. Now I can divide that 2 into both. I'm running out of space, so I'm going to go to the left. So if I divide the 2 into the negative 4, that's a negative 2 plus or minus 2 into 4i is going to be 2i square root of 3. So my zeros here are going to be x equals 4 as well as x equals negative 2 plus or minus 2i square root of 3. And I'm just going to kind of write them there. I'm not going to use set notation because I'm kind of running out of space here. So therefore, instead of writing them equal, I'm just writing them plus or minus together. All right, but then again, notice we have those two complex zeros, which the two complex zeros is what gives us um, our three total zeros, which satisfies, again, the fundamental theorem of algebra. So that's really kind of important to use that fundamental theorem of algebra there. Now, the next one is you can see here we have a number and a variable. So again, we want to be able to write this into what is a cubed plus b cubed. Well, in this case, you can see that um, basically what we want to do is kind of take the cube root here. So, you know, this one might not be a little bit more difficult. So what I'll do is I'll say, all right, well then a cubed is equal to 27x cubed. Well, to solve for a, right, because we want to figure out what a is, I'll take the cube root, and let's do it in red. I'll take the, or in pink, how about that? I'll take the cube root on both sides. All right, and by doing that, the cube root of a cubed is a. The cube root of 27 is 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, and then 3x. So now we have a is equal to 3x, and then if b cubed is equal to 1, then we could say b is equal to 1. Okay, so now you can see here we have two cubed numbers. 27x cubed is a cubed number as well as 1, but now we're using the sum of two cubes. So now we're going to apply this formula. And really, you can kind of follow, like, it's basically if you have the sum of two cubes, you're going to have the binomial a plus b, and then basically it's a squared, and then now the opposite sign minus a times b plus b squared. So again, we're trying to find the zeros. So let's do this in purple. So I have 0 equals, now I'm going to do a, which is 3x um, plus 1 times a squared. Make sure you square both the 3 and the x. And that's going to be minus a times b and then plus b squared. Okay. And we can just go back and check here real quick. Make sure I followed the process here. All right, very good. Now let's go and simplify that one more time. And again, you can kind of skip that step. I'm just kind of working through it um, just for those of you that are not as familiar with the difference, our sum of two cubes. So this becomes 9x squared. This becomes a negative 3x. I have a fly in the room. Uh, and then plus 1. Okay, so again, using, you know, going into our zero product property, I can solve this, right? That's going to be my zero, but I'm going to wait, and rather than doing that first like I did in this example, I'm going to do that last because I know I need to solve this. This is non-factorable, all right? Again, you could try to factor it. You could spend the time doing it, but I'm telling you, these, these uh, trinomials uh, over here are the solutions are e um, complex solutions. So let's just get right into solving the quadratic formula for this. So I'll have x equals opposite of b, positive 3, plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared minus 4 times a times c. And that's all divided by 2 times a. All right. So... Let's just simplify here. So we have 3 plus or minus the square root. Let's see if we can do the radical. So that's going to be 9 and then minus uh, 26. So minus 36, I'm sorry. So 9 minus 36, that's going to be a negative 27. Um, and then that's going to be all over 18. Now we can't take the square root of negative 27, but let's see. Um, you can rewrite that into... Let's see uh, what divides into negative seven. Nine does three times, right? So I'll maybe do that in 
green over here. So let's do another, let's do another breakup of the radical. 27. So I could rewrite that as negative 1 times 9 times 3. Rather than doing this step, let's just do this as i times the square root of 9, which is 3, and then we have radical 3 again. So 3i square root of 3. All right, so therefore I have 3 plus or minus uh, 3i times the square root of 3 all over 18. Now, in this case, 2 evenly divided in 4. In this case, 18 does not evenly divide in 3. However, 3 does evenly divide in 18, so I can reduce the fraction, right? So 3 over 18, 3 since that can be reduced to 1 over 6. Because if you multiply the top and top, you multiply 1 by 3 and 6 by 3, you can see you get 3 over 18. So just divide the top and bottom by um, 3, and you get that solution. So therefore, I have two solutions here. x equals, that's going to be 1 sixth plus or minus 1 sixth i times square root of 3. And then let's not forget this one. Let's kind of work this here. So 0 equals 3x plus 1. So negative 1 equals 3x. And then divide by 3. So therefore, I have x equals negative 1 third. So I have, again, three zeros, one real. And that plus or minus gives me two complex. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is um, really identifying the zeros when we have a special product, which is the difference of sum or difference of two cubes. So when you're looking into these problems, you know, obviously look into factoring, but one thing to notice, like this could, you know, look for difference of two squares, look for perfect square trinomials. And then now that we know about complex solutions, if you see the sum and difference of two cubes, you can just follow, you know, this pattern um, to go ahead and help you out with that. So um, now we're just going to kind of work on to, you know, writing the solutions and we'll get into the next lesson.